Two-time WWE SmackDown Women's Champion. The winner of the first ever WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. Ranked number 7 of the top 50 female wrestlers in the PWI Female 50 in 2015. Ladies, gentlemen, my non-binary friends, it is I, Josh Robinson, here for Love Wrestling. It's WrestleMania week, so it's time to feel the glow with the legacy of Naomi. Guys, it's been a minute since I've done a legacy of. I'm sorry for the extended break. It wasn't really planned that way. It just kind of happened. But hey, it is what it is. We're here. We're here on Love Wrestling. Legacy of might be taking a little bit of a different kind of feel in the sense of how it's released. We're going to do some different stuff, release a little less often, but going to give you the same quality that I've always given you on these shows. And what a better way to come back. It's WrestleMania week. It's Mania season, guys, and there's someone at WrestleMania this year that has the opportunity to become a women's tag team champion for the very first time in her career. That is today's subject here on The Legacy Of. It's none other than Naomi. It's hard to believe that we first seen Naomi on our screens back in 2010 in the game show style of NXT. She was on NXT Season 3, the only all-female season in NXT history. And she was a part of it. She was a big part of it. We've seen her athleticism. We've seen what Naomi could bring to the table. And we're like, this is something really different, especially in that time where women weren't really doing stuff like Naomi, springboard crossbodies and crossbodies in general, hurricane runners, different kinds of athletic things that women weren't showcasing or weren't able to showcase during that time in the diva era back in 2010. So we first seen Naomi all the way back then. Now she didn't even win the NXT season three. Now that was of course won by Caitlyn, but she got down to number three. She came third in the overall season, whatever you want to call it in NXT history. And we would kind of just see Naomi go back down to FCW and, and didn't really see anything of Naomi on a main roster scale until she was with Brodus Clay alongside Cameron as part of the Funkadactyls. And that's when we really see Naomi on screen in her first official call-up to WWE. She was a dancer. She has a dance background um, doing different kinds of things. And we got to see Naomi in this role and actually see her on screen. And the wrestling opportunities were limited. But when we seen Naomi in the ring, we seen that she had something really special and really cool. Especially with her counterpart being Cameron, who had very little experience. And Naomi having a couple of years under her belt at that stage. It was cool to see the dynamic of those two. They would feud with the likes of the Bella Twins, who were teamed up with Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow. They were meant to have a match at WrestleMania 29, and that, of course, famously a part of Total Divas, which we'll talk about in a second, got uh, got squashed, got canned, got shelved, because some things went a little too long. So the only female participating match of the WrestleMania 29 card was actually canned, and Naomi was a part of that, along with the Bellas and Cameron, and the uh, the men that were in part a part of that match. Of course, I mentioned Total Divas. Now, Naomi was a part of the a lot of the seasons of, of Total Divas. She was taken out for a couple seasons here or there, but for the most part, Naomi, Trinity, was featured on Total Divas. Now, I've talked about Total Divas in this show, on this show so many damn times. I don't need to hype up Total Divas too much, but we know my take on Total Divas and how much it evolved the mainstream side of women in the business or in WWE and showed a different side of these women and got a new audience, a new demographic for WWE and for specifically the women of WWE. Of course, Naomi was featured on this. And this is when we really started to see once the Funkadactyls kind of run their course, or at least the Funkadactyls started to break away into more of a wrestling role. Of course, Cameron and Naomi would eventually split and they would have their little feud. Uh, but Naomi was able to showcase some things working along with AJ Lee, the current Divas champion in 2013 and 2014. And actually able to show, hey, there's some momentum building here. There was a b brief period of time where AJ and Naomi were working together. And it looked like Naomi was going to be the one to dethrone AJ Lee. Of course, that didn't happen. There was some injuries along the way. And of course, Paige came along. But there was moments in there that were like, maybe Naomi's the one to do this here. Maybe, maybe Naomi can kind of step up from the Total Divas pack and claim the Divas Championship. She would work along with Paige at Money in the Bank in 2014 in some really great matches alongside Paige. And again, more moments for Naomi to shine. 
We, they were very few and far between when her wrestling was actually able to be showcased and when they were. We seen elements of something really, really cool. I think the biggest word for Naomi throughout her whole career has been potential. The potential to be something really, really special. Now, of course, things would evolve within the women's wrestling scene in WWE. We went into the from the Divas Revolution to the Women's Evolution. Naomi was a big feature, a part of Team Bad alongside Tamina and Sasha Banks. When the original Divas Revolution happened with Charlotte, Becky, Sasha all coming from NXT and the, the shift starting to change. Naomi was in the mix. That's all she really needed to be at that stage. She just needed to be in the mix, needed to be somewhat of a focal point of this, um, of this Divas Revolution, I guess you could say. Now, as we come away from the three on three on three team war, the team bad dynamic would obviously shift and we were focusing on things from a much larger scale on the Charlottes, the Sashas, the Beckys. Now, Naomi again was left out of the pack. This happens a lot. We talk about potential with Naomi. We also talk about mishandling of Naomi. When is Naomi going to be able to get her opportunity to shine? Now, when the original brand split happened, or not the original, but the original of this generation's brand split happened in 2016, Naomi was drafted to SmackDown. And this is where we originally seen the glow gimmick come to life, this kind of larger than life entrance that set her apart from anyone else on the roster. The lights went down, she would have this glow suit. It evolved so many times to what we see it today. And this kind of dancing, fun attitude that would immediately make you a great baby face because it sets you apart from someone else with a great entrance. And I think Naomi did that really well and kind of captivated the audience, especially maybe a younger generation of audience that was just, hey, colors and, you know, dance music and just a lot of fun. That's what Naomi was and was able to use her at athleticism and agility in the ring to kind of combat that style of her entrance and her fun-loving glow persona. In 2017, Naomi captured the SmackDown Women's Championship from Alexa Bliss at the Elimination Chamber event for the very first time. Now, it's just really unfortunate what happens here. Finally, Naomi, after seven years of working in WWE, was able to capture her first women's championship. Now, the problem is, is that the very finish of the match, the springboard moonsault that she does so well, she actually hurt her knee and was injured and had to vacate the championship just a mere week later on SmackDown. Just really unfortunate. A really unlucky situation to get injured on the final move of your first title win. Ugh. Of course, Alexa Bliss would win it back and then at WrestleMania in her hometown, WrestleMania 33 in Orlando, Naomi was able to recapture the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now I say this, all with the most respect in the world to Naomi and just, you know, the evolution of what, where we're at with women in the business today, but it's pretty insane that Naomi's last championship win was five years ago. It's been five years since Naomi was a women's champion in WWE. She had a few shots over the years, of course, like that, but it's this roller coaster with Naomi where they really predominantly put her in a great role along, you know, being SmackDown Women's Champion and eventually losing the title to Natalia at SummerSlam in 2017. And then you just kind of steady out. You know, Naomi's always there, but she's not always featured. We've seen so many of these waves with Naomi over the last few years of just being like, it's time for her, and then they take her away. And then it's time for her, and they take her away. And something that I really love about Naomi is that she has the ability to captivate and capture a different audience, a mainstream audience. I've seen so many times, if you go back to the Royal Rumble 2020, when Naomi returned from an injury, um, she came out to this thunderous pop. And then a lot of mainstream people were talking about Naomi and like, I don't watch wrestling, but this, this woman is cool. To have a black woman in that role is so damn important. And Naomi has been under their their fingertips for years and years and years and I just don't ever think they've capitalized on what Naomi can actually bring to a larger audience within the world and I think that's again potential and misutilization of Naomi is the two key words of what we had with Naomi over the years we just seen most recently Naomi have a fantastic match with Charlotte Flair and be in the role we've seen her have this big program with Sonya Deville now a lot of people had 
opinions on that story may be dragging on a little too long, and maybe so. However, it was cool to see a story get featured on SmackDown every single week and it not be involved with a championship until the very end with the program with Charlotte Flair. But that was just a little, you know, cherry on top of everything with Naomi and Sonya in that time. But just to see Naomi featured again in that way on SmackDown and now going into WrestleMania with Sasha Banks, her former tag team partner, and going through all of this kind of stuff and hopefully we can see Naomi get some women's tag team championship gold. There's a lot to cover with Naomi in the WWE here on The Legacy Of, but I hope you get I gave you a little bit of a, a taste of what's to come with The Legacy Of going forward. Now, it's not going to be every single week that we're doing The Legacy Of. It's going to be a little less frequent, but the same amount of great quality when we can get there. My life is, is kind of taking a bit of a, a, a detour with some things, so... I need to try to get on top of some things, but right here on Love Wrestling is where you can find great content nearly every single day. So hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you're getting notified of when Love Wrestling is dropping new videos. All of the links to my stuff and Love Wrestling stuff will be in the description box below. Until next time, friends, my name is Josh Robinson here for Love Wrestling. I'm signing off. Peace out, everyone.